the spotlight on Randy would start to fade as the 90s wore on. There were changes in country music. Folks like label mate Travis Tritt were coming in and popularizing a new, harder-edged sound. And while the public still had time for Randy Travis, he was far from the only game in town, and the hits were slowing up. Rise and praise when I heard you whisper my name. After Whisper My Name hit number one in 94, Randy wouldn't top the charts again for the rest of the decade. He started focusing his efforts on acting, appearing in several films and TV shows, such as Touched by an Angel. Wayne, please, would you just listen? Listen to her, Wayne, she's an angel. Shut up, Joey! It's a mess over there, and you're lucky they're not going to arrest you. He was frightened. He reacted the only way he That's knows That's no how. excuse. Yes, it is. He's your brother. He needs some understanding. Who the hell do you think you are? As he was finding his footing in the acting world, the team that helped make Randy Travis from the get-go started to break apart. And I had been running Asylum Records for about six years in that period. From 92 to 98, I was president of Asylum Records. And the amount of time Kyle had for producing Randy became very limited. So Randy moved on to other producers. He also left Warner Brothers Records for DreamWorks Records in the late 90s, meaning Martha Sharp was now out of the picture. By the year 2000, Randy Travis's musical career was looking a bit listless, albeit not for long. Rest assured, the triumphant comeback is coming. You know, I haven't really thought about this very much, so you're getting, you're getting some new material from me. It began with Kyle Lenning leaving Asylum Records. I had left the label in 98, and then DreamWorks folded as a record company. So, so he was without a label, and so we were both... Both of us were sort of unemployed. Until one executive named Barry Landis got involved. He was first the vice president of Atlantic Records' Christian division before becoming president of the Christian label Word Records. And he was the one who requested Kyle and Randy to make a gospel album. Conveniently, Randy was starting to head that direction anyway. Gospel-type tunes, in fact, occasionally made their way onto some of Randy's 90s albums. I'm gonna have a little talk with Jesus when I get home tonight. I'm gonna tell him all about my troubles and I know he'll make them right. So, Randy was already poised to cut his first full-length Christian album, called Inspirational Journey. It had a song on there called Drive Another Nail. I've got the scars on these two hands that show I haven't failed. But I don't want to drive another nail. The album didn't top the charts, but it also didn't tank. And it was a heck of a lot of fun to make. So they followed up with 2002's Rise and Shine. Raise Him Up might have been on that album, which is one of my favorite songs I've ever done with Randy. I'll provide for you Walk beside of you I am strong enough It's a stellar track, but there's a more famous one from the same album. And I was also producing um, Michael Peterson at the time with Blake Chancey for Columbia. And about that time, Michael Peterson brought me this song. And he said, I found this song and I think it's perfect for Randy. And I, I played it and I said, you know, I think it's a hit. I think this is a, it's an odd, odd song, but it's a hit. And I think it, you're the guy that needs a hit. You found this song. Why don't we do it on you? And he said, I don't hear it for me. And I said, gosh, Michael, I just, I just, I don't know, man. Anyway, we took it to Columbia and they said, no, we don't want to, we don't hear it for Michael and we're not going to, we're not going to do it. And so I felt like I'd done due diligence. And, and it's like I tried everything I could. And so I sent the song to Randy, who immediately loved it. And uh, that was Three Wooden Crosses. There are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. Ironically, for a man whose career was pretty much defined by its unexpected stratospheric rise at a time when the industry wanted nothing to do with him, it may well be this tune, released when he had already been an icon for over a decade, that constitutes his least likely hit. It struggled its way up the charts. It was an odd tune. Had a, it had one of those twists in it that if you didn't really pay attention to it, you didn't get it. And it ended up 
uh, thanks to Barry and his promotion team at Word Records, that ended up being a number one country record in NSAI Song of the Year, CMA Song of the Year. I, it was it was a huge hit for Randy. Three Wooden Cross, <laughs> written by Douglas Johnson and Kim Williams. Doing an interview a while back, somebody said, you know, you think recording a gospel album may have hurt your career? I said, well, no. Randy would ultimately put out five gospel albums before returning to secular music at the end of the decade. 